is winning again in America. It is no coincidence that the first right cited in the Declaration of Independence is the right to life. This administration will work with the Congress to end taxpayer funding of abortion and abortion providers. And we will devote those resources to health care services for women across America. Well, thousands of abortion opponents from around the world descended on Washington, D.C. today for the March for Life, and they enjoyed unprecedented support from the new administration. Vice President Pence became the first vice president in American history to address the march in person, while counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, spoke as well. President Trump expresses his support, where else, on Twitter. We're joined today by one of the marchers. Abby Johnson was once director of a Planned Parenthood clinic in Bryan, Texas. After a moral crisis, she quit, and now she campaigns against what she once endorsed. Abby, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So i got to be honest with you, I never thought of President Trump as, you know, a huge pro-lifer, an evangelical, social conservative, and yet, amazingly, they've been more supportive of this march than any Republican president I'm aware of. I mean, there's been, never been a vice president address one of these, Kellyanne Conway. I mean, it, are you surprised by this support? You know, I am a little surprised, but I'm feeling very hopeful for the future, for the pro-life movement. And I, I, you know, I'm going to be honest, I was a skeptic. And, uh, you know, he's, he's beginning to prove me wrong here. So I'm glad for that. What, what, do, you what do you make of it? Yeah, I think that, uh, that the pro-life movement helped to elect Donald Trump. Yes. And so I think that uh, this is one way that he can express his gratitude to the pro-life movement for putting him in that position and for supporting him throughout his election. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy he's doing it. It's interesting because in places like Washington and New York and Los Angeles, the single most embarrassing thing you can say, the surest way to be ostracized socially is to say you oppose legal abortion. People just hate that. And Trump doesn't seem to care. Well, he doesn't seem to care about most things. I guess that's a good says. point. <laughs> so I think he just calls it like he sees it. And, uh, you know, as someone who experienced a, a conversion on the issue of abortion, I, uh, I believe that sometimes people who, who do convert to the pro-life movement really have a strong voice because they've seen the damage that the abortion right. industry can do, and now they can really speak about the life issue. So President uh, Trump has pledged repeatedly on the campaign trail, anyway, to defund Planned Parenthood, which takes hundreds of millions of dollars from taxpayers every year. You worked at Planned Parenthood for a while. The obvious question is, do you think the people at Planned Parenthood have any kind of moral qualm about abortion at all, or do they see it just as another medical procedure? I think they see it just as another medical procedure, but I think that it is, it is really the cost center surrounding Planned Parenthood and the services they provide. I mean, they, that is their, their highest revenue generating product that they sell. They implement abortion quotas in all of their clinics. What do you mean quotas? You have to perform a certain number of abortions every month. Um, one of the reasons that I left... Are they explicit about that? Yes. It's, it's in your budget, right there on the line item. Uh, one of the reasons I left Planned Parenthood was because uh, in a budget meeting I was told to double that abortion quota. And for me, as someone who had spoken to the media and had said, you know, we're about reducing the number of abortions, we're about, you right. know, prevention, all of these other services, I was shocked. So since this. you actually worked at a Planned Parenthood, give us some sense of the relative number of abortions versus the number of mammograms versus the amount of prenatal care offered? So, okay, abortions, Planned Parenthood provides over 330,000 abortions a year. They right. are the largest single abortion provider in our country. Um, they provide not one mammogram. Uh, there's not one Planned Parenthood clinic across the country that has a licensed mammogram machine. Huh. or as a licensed mammogram facility, even though Cecile Richards and Joy Behar and many other people said that they do perform mammograms, they eventually had to come out and say that they don't. Planned Parenthood is not a provider of prenatal care. There are a few affiliates that may give out some prenatal vitamins. They might see you one time if you're pregnant, but there are no Planned Parenthood that's asked. Planned Parenthoods that actually deliver children. Um, the bulk of their services are contraceptive services yes. and abortion. Interesting. So that talk about being a health care provider, providing the whole spectrum of 
reproductive related health care services. It's really about contraception and abortion. Sure. Well, and listen to this. We just found out recently there are at least two Planned Parenthood abortion or Planned Parenthood facilities in the country, one in Madison, Wisconsin, one in Overland Park, Kansas. They are abortion providing only five days a week, 40 hours a week, abortion all day, every day. That's pretty hard to take. Abby, thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate Thank you so it. much.